Uh, we were able in uh, the mid 90s to start rain planting again these very old uh, vineyards inside the archaeological town of Pompeii and we had the chance uh, to rain plant the vineyards in the same positions where, where they were positioned 2000 years ago and each and every vine is in the same position so we have the same density of implantation and then we were able to reproduce also the techniques of uh, viticulture in the different areas of the uh, of the city of the town of Pompeii so we have uh, a very interesting uh, laboratory where we reproduced uh, all these uh, viticultural techniques um, from there on we were able to uh, implant of course the uh, descendants of, the, of those uh, grape varietals um, we made a, a first lab with uh, several different grapes on ancient grapes in comparison in the same field and then uh, in the other fields we decided to plant uh, mainly red grapes that were for sure the majority of the wines produced at that time and so we made the first implantation mainly made with Piedi Rosso grape the ancient uh, Columbina pur purpurea from the Romans and a small percentage of Shashin also another typical grape of the area ancient grape and then uh, in a second step of the project we implanted in Daglianico uh, different techniques of viticulture because these grapes are different of course the periods of maturation are different and also genetically and bio biologically uh, the differences uh, among these three grapes uh, uh, forced us to make different choices um, and uh, the wine that comes uh, from this blending is extremely interesting for sure it's different from the microenvironment that we have in Irpinia. Uh, of course Pompeii is closer to the coast. Uh, the microclimate has a, an average temperature that is higher at least 5-6 degrees compared to the mountain viticulture that we work with now currently. That is for sure the, the excellence of Campania viticulture. But the grapes are the same, the roots of viticulture is the same. And so this is a very interesting project which allowed us, of course, to uh, give, re-give life to this uh, uh, extraordinary monument that is Pompeii, unique all over the world, that is uh, the place where everybody can uh, experiment and then testify what was social, uh, economic and, uh, and also biological life in, Roma, in, in Roman times. We planted also uh, the white grapes because in Roman times there was uh, uh, a tradition also for the um, Greek grapes and some of them were very important and were white grapes coming from the family of the uh, Aminae. Uh, but uh, the, the, the majority of production was from reds because uh, in Roman times there was this huge tradition that is very close to our approach to uh, the appellations of today, meaning that for the Romans grapes were important in viticulture but for the wines uh, there were two main characteristics. The first was the geographic origin and the second was the vintage. So uh, they were used to age for a very long time, the big wines, the most important wines, and these most important wines were reds. And uh, so the, the most important reds from, from that time were reds. That's the reason for choosing mainly the red grapes for this iconic wine that is named Villa dei Misteri, and that is produced by Mastro Berardino family nowadays in Pompeii. First of all, uh, um, Viticulture was uh, concentrated in a part of the town that was closer to the amphitheater. And that means uh, the amphitheater, the, the swimming pool and uh, uh, the gym, also gymnasium. And, um, and then there was this area, the Foro Boario, where uh, we have the wine cellar. Uh, that is an, another important uh, heritage and, and symbol of wine culture in the, in the town of Pompeii. That one was made, uh, the, the restoration of the wine cellar of the Foroboire was made uh, with the, a donation of our family coming from the, uh, the, the wine Villa dei Misteri produced in the, in the town. So uh, we have uh, 
um, in Via dell'Abbondanza, that is the main street in Pompeii, uh, going all the way to the amphitheater, uh, several wine bars. Uh, that mean that testify how important was you know wine consumption and, and wine culture in the town. Well, um, we cannot be so uh, precise uh, in in terms of uh, um, in the urban viticulture of Pompeii uh, how many grapes and so what was the yield in those uh, vineyards, of course. But uh, we have an idea given by the techniques of viticulture that were used in the time that were described by the Roman writers in several important books, Tito Livio, of course, Columella and, uh, and Pliny and so on. Um, so we have the density of implantation and uh, with the density of implantation we can imagine what was the approach to the production. So, uh, and this density of implantation is not so far from what we do uh, today in some um, parts of our region and uh, uh, in some particular conditions of soil and of course of uh, the slopes and the exposure and so on. So um, even in viticulture the heritage of the Romans is extremely, has been extremely important for the development of the you know technical knowledge of, uh, of our century. Um, uh, we were able anyway to do a very precise reimplantation and uh, uh, we have uh, studies concerning uh, um, also the techniques for winemaking. For sure we are doing a, a very clean and light process for these grapes but we are not reproducing the parts that are at the end of the, of the winemaking process uh, because uh, um, they didn't have the same approach to winemaking process that we had starting from the uh, maceration and fermentation going on. After fermentation, you know, to preserve the wines uh, in, in, in times and then for the shipments also, uh, the, the conditions were quite different. Well, as we do in, uh, in, uh, in our Mountain viticulture, we do the same there. The, the, the main goal is to keep each and every vine in balance. That means that uh, we don't have to stress in terms of uh, uh, weight each vine. And so we need to, of course, to keep a very uh, well balanced uh, production per vine. Well, the volcanic influence is something that we have in all the region. Uh, we have studies of stratification of the soil, of all the vineyards that we have in Irpinia, in the mountains, where we can see a very strong uh, influence and, and, and important strata of uh, ash in the soil. Uh, so, I mean, this is something that is very typical of all the region. It's a volcanic region. Um, then, of course, uh, the influence of ash closer to Mount Vesuvio is higher. Mount Vesuvio was uh, named as uh, the god and devil for this region, for the fertility that it was able to, gave, to give, but also for the destruction it was able to, to bring to the area. And um, the volcanic influence means, of course, this uh, uh, huge presence of minerals in the soil, and this gives uh, this uh, extremely intriguing character to all the wines that are produced in this, in, in this different soils because we've got soils that have uh, even quite different conditions compared to one comparing one hill to another so uh, even if in uh, uh, such a variety of conditions of soil uh, we have this uh, fil rouge represented by the minerals and this is extremely interesting then we when we move to the mountains to irpinia viticulture we have this strong acidity that is very you know, high and give this freshness to the wines, the, the longevity. So the wines from the coast, from closer to the coast, to Vesuvio area, are a little bit uh, rounder, uh, a little bit softer. The wines from the mountains, from Irpinia, uh, are a bit, uh, maybe a bit stronger and uh, uh, interesting for this acidity and uh, probably require a little bit more refining, but of course, more edible. Uh, our project was a pilot research project and was a project that was able to make uh, Pompeii uh, revive. 
So it's a, a different approach to museum. Museum is not only a place where you can see fossil things and then imagine what they were in the past. It's something that can give you also an idea of uh, what is now to reproduce the social and natural environment in some sense.